Hello people, so uh, just doing a wee deep dive, well a big deep dive on uh, the history of music and stuff. Now um, I looked up, I was I got to thinking one day, um, where did music come from? Now obviously musical theory and um, classical era, the Renaissance period and most <coughs> periods of time, musical theory was invented and um, they had orchestras, stringed instruments, pianos etc. So then I got to thinking though, percussion quite clearly started in, on the African continent a long time ago and um, where it was uh, sounds made from feet jumping up and down on the ground or um, animal heighted um, bongos etc but um, yeah so I'm um, going to look for the first the first known It was the Hirian Hymn number no. 6, and it was considered the world's earliest melody, but the oldest musical composition to have survived in its entirety is a 1st century AD Greek tune known as the Sikilos Etipa, probably butchering that word, and it was found engraved on an ancient marble column used to mark a woman's graveside in Turkey. Now, that was in the first century Anno Domini, so after Christ's death, so we're talking like, well, the first century, but um, that can't be right. So then I got to thinking, uh, excuse that, then I got to thinking, um, first known, first known mention of African percussion. Now, I was, I'm thinking along the lines of, um, the early explorers of Africa, the continent, or what we they later became the colonizers. Um, obviously, before that, they were just traveling, try to go around the Horn of Africa and uh, discover new shipping routes and shipping lanes and new continents and things. It was an exciting time. But um, I'm looking into the people that actually made the, the journey into the heart of Africa. So they actually had expeditions. I believe the Spanish or the Portuguese paid for many expeditions to do that. The English done it. Um, the Dutch done it. So yeah, um, the history of African drumming origins. It's widely believed that Jembe, pronounced Jembe, has its origins with the Numu, a social class of professional blacksmiths from the Mandinka. Yeah, right, hold on, this is here. See, now we're, this is saying it was the 12th, 12th century. So, um, by the 12th century, by the Mandi, Mandinki tribe in what is now Mali in West Africa, it has been played by West Africans for generations, forming an integral part of ritualistic life in Mali, Guinea, Senegal, Senegal, and other neighbouring West African countries. But what I'm wanting to find is first interior exploration of Africa by Europeans, because the Europeans are the ones that invented musical theory. And... Um, Percussion must have come from somewhere. So here we go. But right, there we go. Portuguese explorer Prince Henry, known as the Navigator, was the first European to methodically explore Africa and the oceanic routes to the Indies. From his residence in Algarve, region of southern Portugal, he directed successive expeditions to circumnavigate Africa and reach India. So that's what they were looking for. They're looking looking for a way to um, to get around the silk trade, so they could um, faster shipping lanes. Which is where where the the canal the, I believe it's the Suez Canal is it. Anyway, there's um one of these um canals that can connects Africa. Is there, is there one in Africa? I'll look that up in a minute. Might be in the wrong part of the world. That's South America, maybe. Yeah. Uh, so he's not the one I'm looking for. Why? When did the first? Why did the first Europeans enter the interior of Africa? The Europeans first became interested in Africa for trade route purposes. They were looking for ways to avoid the taxes of Arab and Ottoman empires in Southwest Asia, so they would go around and go around the Horn. So, uh, sailing from Africa was the obvious choice, but it was a long voyage and could not be completed without pit stops along the way, which is where they got massacred, because every time the Europeans got off the boat, they would put their stuff down, go to sleep, and get butchered in the middle of the night. So you can't find this stuff on Google right now, but um, there's I've read about it before. They, they literally had to... Uh, beg, beg for their life kind of thing and um, pay bribes and it was just nasty, nasty warfare on both sides, uh, horrible atrocities committed on both sides, white, black um, Spain, English, Dutch etc but um, so yeah, it's hard to find information, so Prince Henry, when was he doing it?
so that was the 15th century, but the first known song is from the Greeks. So, right, maybe did the Greeks do it. Greek Africa Exploration Expedition. Hanwell and Avgir. Hanwell and Avgir was a Carthaginian explorer of the 5th century BC. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting somewhere. Yeah, they have a German. He's Greek as well. Now, this is the one I'm looking for. I couldn't find this a minute ago. But, uh, the best known for his naval exploration of the western coast of Africa. The only source of his voyage is a Periplus. Periplus, translated into Greek. He has sometimes been identified as a king. Now, this was the 5th century BC, which is a whole five centuries before, um, sorry, no, it's 500 years before um, the first AD man. So this is 500 before his works. This is what I'm looking for, a per periplus about his journey. Now, that's what I wanted to see. Um, where, where can I find that? She was written in 1913, though. Where's the original account? It was written in the Punic language, has been lost. No, that's not good, that's not what I wanted to hear. Uh, so it's been lost. Now, I, what I was looking for, I was looking for him to mention any mention of um, West African or any African drumming, percussion, uh, any kind of musical uh, creativity. Because um, personally, I believe that the percussion um, came from Africa because it's, it's a natural rhythm. You don't need any strings, you don't need any resources, you can do it with your hands, you can do it with your feet, you can do it with your tongue. And um, I just think it's a bit out of order that no, um, there's never any mention of this in the, in history. Everyone will tell you that um, without uh, European intervention or without European invention of um, stringed instruments, wind instruments and all that other stuff and musical theory, we, we therefore wouldn't have the music that we have today. But... To have, even though they didn't have percussion in um, early classical music, I don't believe, um, not 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 to my knowledge anyway. Or the percussion that they did, percussion that they did have was um, animal skin. It was laid in animal skin. Like if you go to the Americas and look at the Native American Native Indians, they done the same. They would use a uh, deer deer hide, elk hide, and things for the the drums. So um, the original version is lost. And 101 lines long. The Greek translation is a bridge, so see, it's like it's been erased from history. In the 5th century, the text was translated into Greek. Two copies remain ex extant, dating to the 9th and 14th centuries. There's the route that they took. So you literally can't find any, e any evidence of early African musical creativity earliest known African music. Saharan green cultures left a legacy of rock art. That's different as art. The earliest scene of music, such as the painting below, it is probably one of the oldest existing testimonies to music and dance in Africa and is attributed to the Saharan period of the Neolithic hunters. Oh, well, there you go. That's, that's pretty much what I'm looking for. Couldn't find that earlier. Um, Six thousand to four thousand years before Christ, BC, BC. What is BC? Just BC. It's basically BC. Um, so there really, there really was. Uh,
fix a different ball game. That's going way back. But, I mean, uh, that's up for debate as well. And what what race, what nationality, uh, what race um, and complexion the Neolithic pe- period people had, because the sun was a different um, temperature back then. Because we're talking literally thousands of years ago. So um, yeah. One was a vivid dance scene discovered in the nineteen fifty six by French ethnologist Henry Le Hoyt, Le Hoyt in a Tassili in Adjur plateau of Algeria. Stylistic grounds of the Saharan period of the Neolithic hunters circa six thousand to four thousand BC. This painting is probably one of the oldest ex- extant testimonies to music and dance in Africa. Let's see it then. There we go. So how come there's no link? When you're looking at this stuff, that's what I've, I've tried finding it for ages. I've got, I need to cut the video in like another 10 minutes for data, data purposes. But um, why is there no link in the journals of the people who explored and went on to colonise Africa? Why is there no mention of culture, like music and um, things like that? Because they would obviously heard it when they were doing it, when it, a successful deal had come, they would um, obviously celebrate and music would be a part of it. And um, I just I just think it's a bit strange how we never ever find the links between um, the cultures, because without um, without musical graffiti we wouldn't have rap music and sampling and things that we have today. But without the percussion and um, and dancing from the African continent, except that we wouldn't have had the musical graffiti at all because it, percussion was a big part of it. So. Um, I'm no expert when it comes to classical music. Um, I just this is this is just me po- pondering my thoughts kind of thing. But yeah, so there's that rock painting. Anyway, just a wee a wee live that I thought I'd throw up, get people thinking using their brain. So yeah, there you go. There is proof of music from six thousand to four thousand BC, but beyond that, you can't you can't find the link at all. I mean. Um, I'll go back to what I was looking at before, just before I turned it on. It wasn't Prince Henry. It wasn't African Drowning. Ahem, yeah, we know that. Yeah, this was it. Davis Livingston in Central Africa. Now, um, I was looking up his journal regarding his journey through Central Africa, and these are the original pages, and I couldn't find a single mention of music throughout the entirety of the, the, the journal and there's hundreds and hundreds of pages but there's not a single mention of music um, if I had a computer things would be a lot easier but I don't um, so yeah I mean I wish there was a way to to search for this but there's not if anyone can get, get on me and let me know if there's any mention of music in this journal Everyone, that was from he was a Scottish missionary as well, just so, to be aware. So, yeah, it was published in New York by the Harper and Brothers, eighteen seventy five. I mean, that's that's quite late late to the game. I mean, Africa was um, explored in the fifteen hundreds, and then certainly by the Vikings, etc. And little do people know, the Vikings were the first settlers in um, well, second beyond the native. Native Indians, but the Vikings were the first to arrive and uh, make a settlement in, in America. Two seconds, tan tan. Um, so yeah, the Vikings actually settled, I believe, on the east coast, um, somewhere just somewhere uh, close to New York or somewhere. I can't remember. It was on the east coast anyway. Vikings were wiped out and it was erased from history that um, people from Europe were, they had found um, the American continent a long time before, um, I can't, most of the guys name the famous guy, American explorer. <clears throat> That's hilarious, I can't even remember the guy's name. The one they speak about in schools all the time gets the recognition for being the first person to explore them when really he was just looking for gold.
I honestly can't think for the life of me. Now there we go, that's the Viking one, but that's not even what comes up usually. Columbus. That's it was Columbus. Christopher Columbus. Yeah, so anyway, I'll try and find more. If I can dig up any more uh, information on the stuff that I'm um, looking up, I'll get on it. I don't even know if this was a good video, but it is what it is. Peace. Scotland's best DVD.